In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to use the blob brush to create a few different coral shapes. Okay, so I'm just here uh, a little bit past where we left off. I went in and um, drew the rest of the shapes to really make this sea turtle um, have a really fleshed out look. Um, looks very similar to the real photo, but still has that illustrated feel to him. Now, I want to come in here uh, to our layers panel, and you'll see that um, he's just on this layer four here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that. We'll unlock the picture of him, and I'm going to just toggle that down, and we'll delete that picture uh, from our project just to make it uh, go a little bit faster. And then I want to come in here and bring in a new picture. So with that layer 5 selected, we'll come over here to File, and we'll go to Place, and I'm just going to go inside of the Reference Files into the images and we're going to choose the spiny coral picture so go ahead and place that and this is way bigger than we need it to be so I'm just gonna drag this over here and we'll scale this down some and then we'll just kinda get to work on this so I'm gonna be creating kind of this shape that you see here and I'm gonna be using the blob brush to do that so I wanna start out just by kinda creating a back to this so you can see that it's kind of on a brown sphere and then we have all these little kind of spikes poking out of it so I'm gonna go ahead and lock the image layer then we'll create a new layer on top of that layer and to grab the blob brush you're just going to be using this right here and we can go ahead and maybe eye drop that kind of brown color here and then just grab that blob brush and I'm using a tablet uh, to create this so if you're not using a tablet you can use um, your mouse but now I've kind of switched over to my tablet and you can see that here I'm going to switch this so that that can uh, controls my brush size with the wheel so I can just just a little bit easier to control I believe with a tablet but you can certainly use the blob brush without a tablet as well so I'm just going to kind of draw this in here um, and then we'll, I'm going to flip this over just so I can kind of erase over here on the side. So with a tablet, you'll, you have the option to um, use the eraser. And that just becomes really helpful if you're using a tablet um, because then you'll have that pen that you can switch back and forth. Okay, so once I get this circle... And I'm happy with it. I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer, then create a new layer, and I'll actually turn that brown piece off. Now I want to come in here and just start kind of creating some of these pieces. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer and grab my brush. I'm going to eye drop kind of this white color uh, here, this lighter color, and make my brush quite a bit smaller. And then just kind of come in here and start to sort of trace some of these pieces. And then later on, if I want to add kind of a gradient to those to make them feel um, just like they have a little bit more depth, the way that we did with our sea turtle, um, I mean, you could see in that image how much depth was being achieved just by having so many tiny little scales and then setting that gradient up for those. So really makes a big difference. Now, part of the reason why I like using an image just to kind of trace over like this is that you don't have to put a lot of thought into exactly how um, you need to make these look so that you're getting the right kind of perspective. So you can see that the ones that are pointing right at the camera basically just look like a circle. So it really helps you to kind of dissect these types of shapes by simply being able to go in here and kind of just draw right on top of that. And then you're really creating, you know, your own uh, set at that point because I'm not going to come in here and draw every single one of these. So it's, it's simplifying that by doing it in this way um, and just makes the drawing feel, you know, definitely feels vector and that's one of the great things about this blob brush is that it is vector um, but you get a lot more organic feel then what you get with the pen tool, um, so the pen tool is going to limit you just a little bit um, if you're using it the right way where you're getting, you know, as few 
points as possible. Um, and with this, you're going to have quite a few anchor points because it tries to, you know, make it as close to what you stroked with your brush as it can. So I'm still just kind of going in here. I, again, I'm not going to show you me drawing every single one of these spikes, but you can kind of see um, that I've gotten a uh, pretty good start here and just in a really short amount of time. That's another thing I really like about this brush is that it's actually way faster than the pen tool, especially when you're kind of tracing over an image. So if I had done the turtle with this tool, um, it probably would have been a lot faster, but sometimes you, you want the precision of the pen tool and it is a little bit easier, um, especially with those scales. You know, I was able to just kind of hold a uh, shift to draw some really straight lines and sometimes it is easier. It just depends on the image that you're creating. So that's why I want to show you, you know, several different ways that you can create these illustrations and um, just getting a few different results, but they're still all going to feel very cohesive just because they are all vector and we're going to be using similar techniques just to color them in and things like that. So now I'm going to kind of zoom back here and let's just take a look at what I've created so far. So I'm going to turn that off. You can see we just have kind of several spikes here and I can go in and flesh that out the rest of the way. Uh, but if I turn that on, you can kind of see how those are fitting there. So what I want to do is again, just create another gradient for those. So I'm going to select all of those pieces and then we'll just come over there to our gradient. And this was just a gradient I was using with some of the other scales on the turtle. So let's just kind of try that out and s that out and see how it looks. And I want to make sure that I'm setting that as the fill and not the stroke. So you can kind of see just how those look. And you want to be careful. Um, if you want to start using your gradient tool, uh, you can. That's going to be this tool over here. And right now those are all set up individually. But if I create just one, you can see that um, that's going to change them across the whole group. So sometimes that might be the look that you want, but I actually really like the way it looks with each one of those kind of individually being blended in that way. So, you know, that's an easy way for you to, you know, just kind of get started with that. Now I want to show you um, another technique with the blob brush. So I, you've seen pictures of the coral that just kind of has a very swooping feel to it. So I want to come in here and make some of that. And I'm, so I'm not even going to be using a picture to go off of. I just want it to look uh, similar to, you know, pictures you've seen of coral in the past. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And then uh, this color, I want to have kind of like a purple coloring. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with that already selected. So we'll kind of bring up that magenta color there and a little more cyan. And then on the other side, let's do something a little bit lighter. So more magenta, um, maybe a little bit ye less yellow. Maybe turn the magenta down a little bit just so it's a lighter pink. Okay, so then I'm, then I'm just going to come in here and start drawing. So uh, you can see kind of just the way that that looks. And one of the things I want you to notice is whenever these uh, unify like this, that gradient is redistributed. So you can kind of see how that changes, especially the higher I make that. So I'm going to undo those and just keep that in mind as you're making this. So if you make, you know, one stroke that's way taller, you're going to lose some of that definition that you get if you're really wanting that to feel um, like you have a lot of different pieces here. So uh, just keep that in mind. And if you want to be able to have that, then what you can do is just kind of achieve it through your layers panel. So I can lock that layer, create a new layer, and then start drawing on top of those. And then they're not going to be unified um, with the ones behind them. So then you can get a lot more, uh, you know, just different kinds of, of strokes that um, are going to make your color more diverse. And so I'll just kind of go through the process of creating several of those looks and then you can kind of just stagger them however you like. Just create several new layers as you go just to try to get that um, covered up. And you need to lock the layer each time as well or it can still unify with um, the last piece. So just several little things to keep in mind as you're working um, 
maybe get something that is just a little bit different from what you're used to. Especially if you've never used the blob brush before, it can take a little bit of getting used to, but it is really a powerful tool and um, makes vector painting really easy and really fun. And then it gives you that flexibility of being able to scale things up, which is, you know, one of the whole great reasons that I like to use vector in the first place. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of call this one done here. And I want to show you that now, you know, I've made those on a whole bunch of different layers, but I can come in there and let's just expand this layer panel out a little bit so we can see, you know, these are all on several different pieces, but what I can do is just select them all and um, make sure to go in there and unlock those. So I have all access to all of them. You can see they're on so many different layers. I can go ahead and hit control G now and they're not going to unify all of those colors, but it's going to combine them into one layer. So it's uh, just a lot easier when you have that all together, just like that. Uh, and then, you know, this one we can have on its own layer. That's going to be that layer seven. And then I have the turtle on its own layer. So then, you know, it really becomes a lot easier when you have each of those on their own layers, especially when you're working with gradients. Okay, so that about wraps it up for the blob brush. I'll go back in um, in between lessons and just finish up this shape that you see right here and maybe make a few other things with our blob brush. And then I'm going to show you in our next lesson how to use just the regular paintbrush tool to achieve a different look for um, some other kind of coral that we're going to be creating. And then we'll also be talking in that lesson just a quick way to create some brain coral using the um, Pathfinder panel um, and some of those options there. So stick around and we'll talk about that in our next lesson.